It's okay. It just came seven o'clock. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I think I'm going to call this meeting to order at 7 p.m. This meeting of the Village Trustees of Woodstock. And I'd like to start off with citizens' comments, if there are any. No? All right. Um, so next, we're going to, there, so on the agenda, it doesn't say any additions or deletions posted, but Nick Clark, who is a member of, oh, are you Nick Clark? Yes. Oh, OK, I was hoping you'd speak during citizens' comments. So. Everyone, this is Nick Clark. Nick is a member of the Thetford Select Board, and he just wanted to speak briefly about a proposal to hire a regional energy commissioner that several of the surrounding towns could share the cost in, and he just wanted to chat a little bit about that. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I am Nick Clark from the Thetford Select Board, but I'm here personally, not officially representing any board. Um, Nor Norwich Energy Committee and our Energy Committee had been talking about uh, trying to share an energy coordinator because small towns have trouble um, coming up with a full-time staff position on their own and, and um, there are a lot of energy issues that they have in common, whether it's weatherization or um, getting LEDs in town buildings. Uh, so we started looking into that. Uh, and developing a plan working through the Regional Planning Commission um, and quickly realized it would be beneficial to include a few more towns. Um, so the current list is seven, including Woodstock. Um, the job description in the proposal is almost verbatim of the energy coordinator for Hartford. They hired him in this last year, I think. He's been there just over a year. Um, but the the duties are, um, or would be essentially ranging from applying for grants on behalf of the town to being a point of contact on uh, efficiency projects or solar projects. They would be a um, employee through the Planning Commission, so they'd be available to help businesses or public schools or non-municipal organizations like a library, if you, I don't know if your libraries are municipal or not. Um, but the idea is that the uh, participating towns would share in the cost of the staff position and then they would also share in the benefits of um, having someone with regional expertise and energy expertise assist the towns uh, in reaching the energy goal set by the state. Um, so Jill Davies suggested that I come here. I, I don't fully understand how the village relates to the select board, but um, that's my short presentation. The, the stage we're at right now is trying to gauge the interest of those towns to see who wants to participate and who doesn't. I believe I'm on the agenda for the select board next week here. Um, so when we know who's interested, essentially what we're going to do is work with Two Rivers to figure out solid dollar amounts for each town um, and then work on refining the proposal with the participation of those seven towns. Um, essentially it's a service contract, so by statute that service contract would have bylaws uh, which are pretty flexible. Uh, so if we wanted um, flexible in terms of how accountability would work or how the employee is overseen or how energy committees or commissions are involved, um, but that would be the second step, first step at this phase and at this meeting in the next couple weeks is just seeing who's interested and um, if it's something that towns or villages would like to explore further as an idea or a proposal. <coughs> Would it be a full-time position? I would imagine it would be since it seems like a lot of responsibility, seven towns for one individual. Right. With so, a lot of participating organizations, potentially. Right, so it would be full-time. Um, there are models that exist both in Vermont and New Hampshire in different sectors, uh, whether it's solid waste. Um, in New Hampshire, they have a similar position that's full-time in um, one of their northern counties, I forget. Um, but it would be a full-time position. There's the other select boards I've talked to, there's been a debate over having too many towns versus too few towns. Yeah. If you have fewer towns, the cost per town goes up. If you have too many towns, the benefit per individual town, or the attention paid to individual towns goes down. Um, part of the thought we were having is that because it's a regional 
position, there's some sort of copy and paste effect. If you're applying for a grant for one town, it's pretty easy to replicate that quickly in another town. So mm -hmm. the hours spent tends to be more efficient. You know, if it's just the Hartford Energy Coordinator, they're doing a job once and they're done. Uh, whereas with a regional coordinator, you can do it once and do it pretty quickly six more times. Yeah. So the hours come out a little differently. Um, uh, it would be full time. Um, what I'm thinking now, talking to other energy committees, is that each select board or each town would appoint a representative to some sort of committee or commission to oversee the position, and that committee would set priorities, set projects, whether it's a region-wide weatherization effort, either a region-wide solarization effort. Um, so they wouldn't be trying to do everything at once. They'd be tracking savings, tracking their progress. Um, but obviously there's a lot to do yeah. everywhere. Well, I, I don't think we need to make a motion on this or anything like that. You're just here to gauge interest and see if we're interested in that. At this point, am I correct or yes. that's so, all? So um, with, uh, with select boards, I've been, I've, been ask, I've been asking to gauge their interest. Um, with the select boards, I I've been asking them each to appoint one person to be a point of contact as the proposal gets worked on. I don't know if you want to do that or how the village works with the select board, but I would be fine if you guys wanted to be part of the process of working out the details of the proposal as it evolves. Oh, definitely. Yeah, um, I would be interested in staying abreast of the situation and knowing um, where things are at. I think we have a pretty vibrant energy committee, right, Joe? Mm -hmm. We do. That meets regularly still? It's, it's not a town energy committee right now. I think it's sustainable Woodstock, but it works. Yeah, okay. And have you been in contact with um, Zach Ralph. Yes. Zach Ralph's my. Zach Ralph. Zach Ralph is how I yes. met Jill, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoyed that. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Stop me by. Thank you. Um, all right, so next on the agenda we have requests for permits. First up, we have permits for use of the green. We have Zach's place and the turkey trot. Do we have anyone here to? present on behalf of Zach's place. Um, it looks like the permit is the same as it has been, or at least it was last year. Mm -hmm. So um, I would entertain a motion to- I move to approve as presented, as submitted. Uh, Second. All those in favor of approving the motion? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, the motion passes. Next up, we have Pentangle Light Garden. Well, I'm Joshua Pawnee, uh, chair of the board of Pentangle, and I believe it's, and Serena, you could probably speak to this, virtually unchanged from last year as well. Um, same time frame, um, use of the green, um, looking to sell uh, alcoholic beverages within a designated area, um, pursuing live music. So I think it's <coughs> virtually unchanged from last year. I move to approve this presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, next, request for permits for parade and event. Uh, Zach's place, the turkey trot. So this is for use of, um, this is, yeah, of the roads for the parade. Um, that permit also looked to be exactly the same as it has been in the past few years. So. I would entertain a motion. Chief, did you have any concerns? I'd move to approve as submitted. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. And next, uh, we have a permit for the Naked Table Dinner. Kathy, are you here to present that? I am. Thank you. Um, we've done Naked Table on the uh, Middle Bridge before. Um, this is similar to that, basically. Is it always in the chamber then? No. Yeah. The chamber is is here to present the permit. Okay. Um, we're working with Yankee Magazine and a TV station out of Boston, I believe, is filming it. Ooh. So. Wow. On a Saturday instead of a Sunday this year? September 14th, 4 p.m. and at 8.30 p.m. Is Shackleton Thomas? Like yes. That? Okay, so they're doing the same program? Shackleton Thomas and the Woodstock Farmers Market. Okay. 
Yes, same, same deal. It's just a little later in the season, okay. and it's being filled by Yankee Magazine and a Boston TV station. More publicity. Yes, free. Oh, it's free, so it's not a fundraiser. Um, it's free publicity. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> is it a fundraiser? Um, I believe so. For a nonprofit, you have it's to be determined. Yeah. It was in the past, but maybe mm -hmm. not. Yes. Okay. You don't know. It, I don't know who it's going to. I don't think they've decided yet, but it will be for a nonprofit. All right. Um, I move to approve as presented. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Oh, job. All right. Good job. <laughs> We have permits for use of the sidewalk, Change the World Kids, for their um, annual Pada La Tierra. Well, that's not what it says on here, but yes, that's what it is, the Pada La Tierra sidewalk chalk that they usually do every fall. Uh, is anyone here to speak to that? I mean, again, I didn't see any changes to this permit, so. Uh, my question was, is it, um, does it overlap with any of the already approved permits in front of Bentley's or um, the things that we've already approved to have work <coughs> on that might? I know, I, was, I know that there was around this time that we approved Bentley's to be worked on, and I don't know if that's the area they want to use or are they still doing it. Right. Right. I know that so. in the past they've used, the Change World kids have used the dummy and then the sidewalk across from or in front of like unicorn that area okay and i know that same weekend it's the art it's the, the art, art show festival, art festival there's also that uh car sh oh, yeah. okay. show that's happening um beth do you happen to have the dates for the bentley's brick work i don't remember I which don't off the top of my head but i have not heard anything from them about going moving forward moving and if forward. they do that work they have to be off the sidewalk off the by, side 10. Anyway. Off the side by, yeah. Yeah. by 10 and i think that event goes all day and okay we'll i just thought i'd bring it yeah. up just yeah. in case i move to approve as submitted and second that all those in favor aye opposed um, right so next up we have another permit for use of the sidewalks from home partners they have a permit to place a lift in a parking spot at 29 Elm Street so that they can do painting of the home over the course of two to three days. And do we have anyone here to speak on that? He's not here, he lives in Massachusetts, but um, he has been in and said that he would be in contact with Robbie. Um, it won't be like this week, it'll be in, in the next week or so. So like the week of the 25th of August or? Probably the week of the 20th. Okay. And, and, and weekdays, not weekend. It's weekday. Okay. Weekday. And do you know, if, um, it's, if I don't, it's not really mentioned in the permit, but is it going to be stationary in that spot for those three days straight, or is he moving it and then bringing it back? Or I'm a, I'm not sure what the. I'm just curious plan what is, but I would assume they would either rent a parking spot for that time period, or they would move it into the driveway at night. It's it's to, to be determined after approval, but it feels like you need to no, know that before, before we approve. Yeah. Well, um, well, we have two more meetings before that I know of before the week of the 20th. I say we table this until we get more details about time frame, just because safety issues. I don't know if they're coming in and out whether they're going to be stationary, what time of day are they going to be moving it around. I would like to know their exact dates. I mean, that too. Yeah. So we will table that permit until a later meeting. We could approve it at one of our joint meetings. Yeah. One yeah. of those meetings. All right. Um, it has to be Thursday. It cannot be Friday. So. Uh, for voting on this? Mm -hmm. OK. okay. Friday is a workshop. Right. So you can't vote. OK. Oh. All right, uh, police chief's report. Well, this is 
kind of a strange experience tonight without Phil here, isn't it? Uh, so I just wanted to say how much I appreciate everything you did for me, my family, and, and uh, y'all said it before, we'll say it again. We're going to miss him. Uh, that said, going forward, we uh, had two DUI arrests in July, and starting on August 16th uh, through September 2nd, we'll be participating in the Governor's Highway Safety Program Labor Day DUI campaign, so we'll have extra patrols out for that. Um, in July, as part of the Governor's Highway Safety Program, officers worked an additional 50 hours and wrote an additional 49 tickets, which is all over. Uh, highway safety grant monies paid for that so that was a bonus for our town um, along those lines I ask people to everybody <laughs> here and everybody at home lock your doors please <laughs> last month we uh, experienced a couple thefts from vehicles um, both of those were unlocked and uh, we also had a vehicle that was stolen and it was recovered in Richmond Vermont so the keys were left in that vehicle so <coughs> the keys out lock your door um, Are any of those incidents linked? We don't know. We don't have any leads at this point. This is just crime of opportunity that happened. One happened during the day in a, in a parking lot over by buildings, and one happened uh, on the overnight hours parked on a residential street. So it's hard to say if they're linked. It's interesting that they're nothing so close together. I um, it all depends. We all sometimes get a rash if people are trying doors yeah. in one neighborhood in one particular night. But in this case, there were two separate incidents within the same month, but different locations, different times of day. So my gut tells me probably not related. Um, so if anybody has any information on those, I ask them to call the, the police department. Uh, I'll be having uh, coffee with the chief if anybody wants to stop by on August 29th. Um, between 7.30 and 9, I'll be at Montvert. And, um, and if you stop by and say hi, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. School starts August 28th in Woodstock. And, uh, and aside from what I'm just gonna talk about, I just wanna put out there that please be careful with the buses and the students on the street. Um, every year it's the same thing. We just try to caution everybody get used to the buses again, get used to a lot of the kids, get used to the kids on the bicycles at the beginning of the school year. But um, as we all know, Pro Pro uh, Prosper Valley has merged with Woodstock, which has now doubled the population, or almost doubled the population of the elementary school. So the principal, Maggie Mills, was trying to come up with a way to alleviate some of their congestion issues that the school experiences in the morning during drop-off. One of the things we discussed, and, and we discussed several different things this morning, um, but one of the things we discussed that we thought might be a viable option, but we wanted the board's input, was to establish an additional drop-off zone on Cross Street, um, probably halfway down the block up to um, South Road. And in addition to the drop-off zone that would be in, in front of the school so I would probably put uh, she would have a staff member out there and I would put an, an officer out there at least for the first couple of weeks so until people get a little bit educated as to it's a drop-off zone not a parking zone the, the rub is you're losing some of those parking spaces for people in the morning mm -hmm. but the upside is you're allowing more people to drop off uh, quicker and maybe more efficiently, which will alleviate congestion and um, it shouldn't generate any more traffic on those side streets that already exist because people can come in. They got they usually exit off a of high street and cross and court anyways, but this way they're just coming in off of high or court or cross and exiting down south south road, whether they go north or south, I don't know. So that's per the sort of the, the brainstorm that we came up with or the proposal but I didn't want to go forward with something unless the board felt comfortable with it. Where exactly on Cross Street? Just right at the... So, yeah, uh, between, so picture between the block between Court Street and South mm -hmm. Road mm -hmm. on Cross Street, mm -hmm. probably about halfway down, um, maybe close to the driveway of the administration building oh. on the inn, mm -hmm. okay. along that curb, mm -hmm. the, the sidewalk curb, is where we would create another drop zone. Mm -hmm. Seems like... 
they, 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 I mean, the whole thing is kind of... Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. going to be a bit of an education process, I think, yeah. and we'll try it. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't uh, at least alleviate the issue or if it causes more issues, we can scrap it. But we're just trying to, she's trying to think, you know, get ahead of it, think outside the box a little bit and figure out what we can do to try to solve the congestion issues that, that we're having in the morning because of the increased population of students and parents dropping off. Mm -hmm. I know... <coughs> I think it's a good initiative to pursue, certainly. But I also know that um, it would be nice if we could encourage our in-village parents and students to walk. Because I, I know that we all get rushed in the mornings and mm -hmm. um, it's easier to just pop in the car. But one of the lovely things about living in the village is being able to walk to school. Yeah. Uh, you know what? And with the increased traffic, people may just be naturally pushed to do, to do that anyways. I, I don't know. But I'll, when I talk to her, and because I... I told her I'd get back to her about what we spoke about. I'll let her know to put in her newsletters, encourage the village students to walk. That'd be great. And we have the Safe Routes to School initiative that we've been pitching for all these years, so it would be great. It's a good opportunity to, to put that to use. I have one question, too, on the um, having kids on their bikes. Where do you suggest they ride their bikes once they get to the metered areas? Because my daughter ran into an officer, and they said they told her not to ride her bike, that she had to walk it. but. By ordinance, that there's by ordinance, you're supposed to ride your bike uh, or push your, walk your bike if you're on the sidewalk. You're not supposed to ride your bike on the sidewalk. Right. I have a hard time telling a kid, get in the street with the traffic when right. they're riding their bike on the sidewalk. So if there's a lot of pedestrian traffic, I mean, common sense would tell right. you, let's walk. And But if there's nobody else on them, if there's no real pedestrian traffic, Mm -hmm. I don't see the harm in having a child ride their bike on the, on the sidewalk. That's okay. that's me. But technically, by ordinance, they weren't wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, meters. So should I say we're going to go forward with this? And get, is that the sense yes. I get? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, so meters. The revenue for July this year was fourteen thousand eight hundred and thirty-five dollars and fifty cents with a 37.48% credit card usage rate. That compares to July of 2018, uh, where the numbers were 14,957. So you're off less than $100, mm -hmm. or almost right on, the, right on the same money. Uh, and very consistent with the credit card usage last year was 35.36%. Talking of me out meters, mm -hmm. we, uh, the repair cost for the meters has increased 50%. It went from $80 per meter to $120 a meter without notice. And so when we got the, the invoice for some meters that we sent out, I questioned it. And uh, the rep has told us that, nope, it wasn't a mistake. He doesn't know why there was such a big increase other than he alluded to the tariffs from China and a lot of the Chinese parts <laughs> are made in these meters. But that's his excuse. But a 50% is, is a pretty sizable increase. Um, but that said, and I can't, we had a little bit of a back and forth, it was amicable, but I said I think the company was trying to take advantage of Woodstock because we're small, we have a lot invested in these meters. Either that or they're trying to make the repair of these older meters so cost prohibitive that we have to upgrade to their newer meters. He assured me that was not the, the case, but anyways, I think it's, I, I bring it up to you because <clears throat> I think it's maybe worth looking into alternatives. Mm -hmm at this point if it's going to be you know that expensive to repair the meters another alternative though is <clears throat> and he suggested this is that some towns have ordered their own spare parts and they will send somebody up to train some of our personnel mm -hmm. on how to make some of the more simple repairs that would not necessarily require us to send the meter out and so we would save you know obviously that much more money how often that. are we having to send meters out uh, not as obviously not as much as we were originally once we got the battery issue fixed, but I think we're sending maybe half a dozen a month out. So it can be, it's going to add up if we don't have a plan in place. And it goes in, it's for whatever reason, it's like anything else, it goes in, sometimes you have a, more up than other times, you have more meters. There wasn't anything about the repair costs outlined in a contract with them? Originally, the, see, this, the contract, I think, is up. 
which is one reason I think maybe the, for the increase in cost, but in the contract it was $80 a meter. Okay. So the contract I think has, is up, if not close to being up. So it's, again, it's not anything we would have to, if we decided to seek an alternative, it might be something we would, that wouldn't be anything we'd have to worry about. Did they mention any, but anything about the cost? What would it cost to send that person up to do a training? Uh, I don't think he said it would cost anything. I think it would just, they would just send a tech up. Okay. And, and they would, he chose to do, his, do the training. So do you intend to renew that contract or is that going to be renegotiated or is it going to... That will be up to the board. Yes. Um, yeah. So I'll pull the old contract yeah. and we'll look at it, review it, and go and, uh, and go from there because I think it's worth looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sounds like it. Um, and so that's what I have. That's my report. Hey, Vince. You still have the old meters? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Seriously. Well, with that said, if you look at from a revenue standpoint, and I know meters aren't intended to generate revenue, it's obviously for turnover and spaces down, down. But the revenue did go up thirty about thirty percent with credit cards. Yeah. As, as overall. So it's not a total loss. Mm -hmm. I mean we're still very much I think in the black in terms of cost versus uh, revenue, but I just, like I said, I just think it's something to look into. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Any questions? I have a question. Um, the two-hour parking permit pilot program that we wanted to try, did that, has that started yet, or when are we? Yeah, I think we've we've sold some, I think sold some, or not, if not all of them, a lot of permits. I will, I honestly haven't heard much about it, um, so I just assumed it was running smooth and of course once you, s you sell the 10 permits there's really not much more to it okay. but I, yeah we have okay. all right thanks. Okay. all right so next up uh village manager's report david i didn't know if you had anything you wanted to discuss i don't at this time i mean i think everything's running as smooth as can be and hopefully it continues that way <coughs> Any have your interactions with Frank been? Excellent. He's a, a great help. He really knows how to. Because he's doing things now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. running yeah. the town, and yeah, we're yeah. working together as we need, and things great. are moving along. Awesome. Next question. Yeah. Good. Did you have any questions about financials? I, I, you know, nothing struck me as odd. All right. We don't have any old business, so. Dale, I noticed you walked in. Were you here for the Zach's place? So we approved your permits. Okay, I was told to be here after 7.15. But we were, we were very fast. Okay, and I sorry. Like an Thank you. I out. so appreciate it. You're all good. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right, so. We don't have any old business to discuss that I know of, but on to new business. We have a request for assistance in removing old telephone poles from in front of 12 through 14 Prospect Street. Yes. Um, and Sandy, yeah. I believe you wanted to speak on that? Yeah. Uh, you folks had your pages there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, essentially, uh, this is on uh, Prospect. Mm -hmm. Do you know where Prospect is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, and there are four families that are, are, are uh, pushing this idea of uh, getting rid of the old uh, telephone poles uh, that uh, the new poles have been there now for more than three years. And they have not moved all of the lines from one pole to the other pole. And there, <coughs> there are three lines right now on the new poles, but there's still five lines on the uh, old pole. Mm -hmm. And um, so essentially we have, we're talking about two poles is mm -hmm. what we're talking about. And what we have is, uh, uh, actually, uh, we have four poles now for people to hit, 
uh, the uh, one, one pole is only 20 inches off of the, the pavement. There's no uh, uh, sidewalk there at all. And um, they just, the place just looks terrible with all these wires around there and uh, whatnot. And it just, uh, we'd like to, to get rid of those. And on the very last page there, uh, I actually, Dave Brown uh, uh, put out an article on removing the old utility poles, and that's what sort of pushed us to uh, come to you folks, because that's what he says here. Uh, uh, if you live in the village, the uh, uh, village trustees, um, uh, the individual uh, is the place you come, and they in turn uh, uh, ask the uh, the people that uh, own those poles, I guess, mm -hmm. to get to get them out. So can I add some information? So this item came up um, in conversation with Dave Brown and with Phil Swanson. So when Green Mountain Power come to us for permission to put up a new pole. Uh, we can give that permission and they take no responsibility for taking the old pole down or for managing the other carriers to take their wires to the new pole. So Dave Brown is the person who's pointed this out and if you drive around Vermont you'll see two poles in many many places. Yeah. Um, so I suggest that what we do is deny Green Mountain Power any, position, any permission to put up new poles until they carry out what we want them to do. I, I don't know how much power we have with them, but I think it could be something that we investigate. That sounds great, but if there are other companies renting space on those poles and they don't take mm -hmm. you seriously, such as one of the companies that David mentioned in his article, um, I guess that's where we go to the Vermont Department of Public, Service. Public Service and get them to put pressure on those companies. It's a whole investigation because I think the problem is going to get worse. Like if you drive now from Bethel to the 89, that whole stretch is full of duplicate poles. And if you now that you know about that, now this has been raised, you'll see them everywhere you drive. Here in Linden Hill as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have always, he says here that the uh, uh, it, Either body, uh, either, that either either the, the uh, you folks or or the town has the ability to demand the removal of the old utility poles from the Vermont Department of Public Service. Well, one of our last meetings with Phil, we brought this up when Green Mountain applied to put new poles on Linden Hill. And Phil said in his past experience that he was calling the Vermont oh. Depart Department of Public Service nonstop for months to get it done. Mm -hmm. And I think I would say as trustees, we're happy to, to try. We're happy to try. try. We're happy to do what okay. we can. We uh, we appreciate that. I'm speaking for the other people too. Absolutely. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Come here. All right. Um, so next, under new business, we have set a date for public hearing regarding the town plan. So the two dates that Michael proposed to us were September 17th and September 24th. So the September 17th yeah, is actually your a meeting. So that's what he was proposing. So this is a letter to both boards. So he's proposing you guys take the September 17th meeting. Isn't that the select? That's the select that's board meeting. Um, that's not the right. So the, the September the 7th meeting is a select board meeting. Sorry. September 17th. September 10th is already slated as a joint meeting starting at 6.30 in front of the um, trustees meeting. Oh, interesting. So maybe. So maybe we, do you remember why? Well, I guess that was just a quarterly. So what is know, that joint meeting for on the tip? It was, not, it was just to establish some regular joint meetings for like us. Like a quarterly so we could do check things like this. So oh, so it sounds like it's already set for the 10th. So we need to make a motion on that? 
Yes. Well, is Michael available on the 10th? It's not one of Why is he the suggesting the 17th and the 24th? Do you know? I think he just looked at the schedule wrong. He wanted it for your trustees meeting and your select and the select board meeting. Mm -hmm. So the time. <coughs> Maybe we we tentatively say the 10th, but reach out to Michael and make sure he's available. If not, we will come back and look these other two dates. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. All right. Just a sec. Let me think. The 17th, we're beyond the 10th of the month already. And has that got anything to do with um, a notice? Do you need 30 days notice because... September 10th. No, it's a. Make it. hmm? Isn't it a 15? Okay. Probably. Public hearings are 15 day notice. Okay. Can you yeah. ask that we have that document uh, circulated so we have plenty? It's a big document to be. Yeah, he will just be. He say, just didn't want to answer. give it tonight because it's a huge document. Okay. That will be circulated okay. probably electronically and in paper format. And how do, does the public get access to that? They can come see it in Michael Brand's office. Is there a way? Could we put it up on the website? Because I imagine there's a PDF. Once it's like... I can try. It sometimes has a hard time with PDFs that large. It doesn't have the or, capacity. Or I don't know if like we have a Google Drive or something like that, and you mm -hmm. can link to it on the website or something. Can try. Some cloud. Because <laughs> I know that that's a comment. <laughs> Our I get a lot. website. <laughs> I was going to say. Oh. <laughs> We're powered by WordPress. <laughs> Great. WordPress has come a long way. Yeah. Should be able to do it. All right. So next on the agenda, set village tax rate for fiscal year 2020. So over the past few weeks, we discovered a clerical error in the way the tax rate was spelled out in the village annual report that you all received back in late February, early March. Um, our last accountant forgot to add in some numbers and so the tax rate was a slightly lower than it should be. Then the in the village annual report it says that the tax rate is 0.1945 but it should actually be 0.1976, which is um, an additional $14.50 per $100,000 of value on each property. So we need to revote on that uh, rate to officially change it. I don't know if anyone had questions about not at all. Is this the same for residential and non-residential? Um, is that something completely different? It, this is the additional village tax rate. So this is um, whether it's non, it's an, in addition to the town tax rate. So village ta gets taxed this additional amount. Yeah. Whether it's residential. Doesn't or matter if it's residential. Could you put that in a percentage? The, what it means as uh, raising your taxes? Mm -hmm. Say the numbers again. Yeah, it would be, yeah, it, would be she, it was like $14 per $100,000 in addition property value. So what's that? That's like point to the zero one four. What was it last year? What was no, point, no, no, one four. Last year it was point one eight three yeah. one, and now it's point one nine seven six percent. What was last year? Point. One eight three one. Did you hear that? Point one nine seven six. Oh. Probably <laughs> yeah. I think it'll be very. It's uh, like fifteen. <laughs> it's going to be like dollars. fifteen yeah. dollars per hundred thousand dollars of value. Yeah. So if your home's worth three hundred thousand dollars, you're only paying forty five dollars. Forty something. Forty five dollars. I move to approve the new tax rate. 45. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. The rate change passes. When does this go into effect? When does it show up like on your escrow bill? Uh, tax bills will be sent out in um, early September, late August, early September. Okay. So that'll be. <coughs>
Great, so next, um, unless no one has any other business they'd like to discuss, um, next we have approval of minutes. I have a couple of edits for the July 8th meeting, joint meeting with the select board. Um, page one, line 18, you wrote the village trustees at 7.04 p.m. I think you then meant 3.46. Yeah. On um, that same page, line 41, I believe the vote passed by four. I believe I was here by that time. Um, you walked in after they voted the first time. Or to go into executive session. Mm -hmm. I think they voted, tw you guys voted twice to go into executive session, but I have the first time you voted. Hmm. Um, I think that's it for that one, and then something else in the other one. So, it okay. Yeah, so, that was it for me, I don't know. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I move to approve all uh, July 8th, July 9th, July 30th, and July 31st minutes. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Uh, so all we have left to do is review expense warrants and then adjourn. So I will entertain a motion to do both of those items. So moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Then. All right. So that ends our meeting at 7.42 p.m. Thank you, everyone, for coming.